Hi everyone, welcome back to Plum Mashable. So I mentioned this in my favorites. This is the mink texture paste. I'm gonna show you how to use it and how to make a really simple card with it. So let's go ahead and get to it. All right, so before we go with the texture paste, I'm gonna make myself a bit of a background. I'm going to speed through this a little bit because I'm aware you guys have seen me ink enough times but I'm basically just gonna make it using a couple of different colors. I found a picture, it was on um, it was on Instagram, it was one of their Lawn Fanatics ones, and it just, the color combination of these ones, so I've got uh, cracked pistachio, peacock feathers, faded jeans, and black soot, just looked really, really cool. So I wanna recreate that, and then I'm just gonna do the texture paste on top to make a background. Whether or not I use it for a memory dex or use it for a card, I'm not quite sure yet, but either way uh, so whenever I'm working with texture paste I like to stick my paper down first it is a little bit difficult when now I'm adding ink to it because sometimes I like to move my ink move my page around a little bit but I think this will be easier than doing it the other way so I'm gonna start off with the inking I'm just gonna go ahead and do it really really fast and I'll be back in just a minute So my background is now done. I had to change the piece of paper that I was using because there was something sticky on the edge of um, the piece of scrap that I picked up and it just wasn't reacting very nicely with the ink. So I just got rid of it. I did spritz a little bit of water on there and I kind of let it do its thing. So now we're going to move on to the texture paste. So there are two, as far as I'm aware, there are two different kinds of this texture paste. This is the clear one. There is also a white one. I don't know why it would matter what color the paste is. That's me though. So if you actually do know, please do let me know. And then I'm gonna put a stencil, which is gonna be where all the foil goes. So this is our background, and then we're gonna put the stencil on top. So I have a couple here, and I've made these myself using my Cricut, uh, using SVG cut files from K Becker, uh, which is just a downloadable place that I found on the internet. And I'm just trying to decide if I wanna do hearts, or stripes, or spots. I think I think I want to do the hearts. I think these ones are really cool. So I'm going to stick those on there. So I use a little bit more washi tape, and that'll hold everything down while we put the um, put the paste on. So I'll just hold that down with a bit more tape. Now, usually when I'm using stencils, I do prefer to use a and not acetate but because I don't have anything else we sort of went with that um, it'll work just fine especially because using the texture paste it'll you're scraping into it as opposed to actually inking over the top of it and I'm still trying to find the best way to ink over the top of these stencils so the other thing I have here is my cake scraper it is a cake scraper it's an icing scraper um, if you've got one of the cool silicon ones that works really well too but you just need a scraper of some kind to be able to put the paste uh, in the in the hearts now I find the easiest way to do this is to put it off on the side however I do find sometimes that the texture paste gets stuck on my mat a little bit so I've been using little scraps of acetate sort of squidge out as about as much as I think I need you, you don't need as much as you think you do start off with not as much as you think and then build up if you need it and then we're just going to transfer this on to the stencil just scrape it in. So you're just trying to get it all in the holes. You can put the paste straight on the top and then spread out if you like. That's a, another way that you can do it. Either way works fine. And I have managed to put it back into the bottle when I'm finished with it if you, you do happen to have some left over because you, you do tend to have a bit left over. So it's good to do sort of more than one project at once too. Just 
making sure it's in all the bits. And then once I'm pretty sure it's in all those bits, just pull that off. So because I used the oxide and it was still a little bit wet, it has picked up a little bit of the ink. That's okay because we're not using it anymore, so it doesn't matter. So while it's still wet, you want to pull the stencil off. Because that's acetate, you can go and wash that under the sink and actually get another use out of it. But I also want to pull this off my mat so I can clean it up while it's still wet. Then what you need to do before we add any kind of foil whatsoever, you need to let this dry. So at the moment, you can see, and I'll, I'll do a zoom in, you can see that it's, it's still got the white. You need that to be 100% clear before you put any foil on this. If you do put it through the foiler now, it'll just squish everything and turn into a big old mess. So you definitely want to wait until it's 100% dry. The longer you can leave it, the better. But I'll tell you when I come back, because I'm going to cut to the next bit when this is dry. Um, I will let you know how long that took. One little hint that I do know, don't, or try not to, unless you're in a big rush, try not to use uh, a heat tool with this. It does sort of make the, the texture paste bubble, which doesn't give you as nice a result. So if you want to just hang there for a bit, I'll cut <laughs> and we'll go straight to when this is dry. All right, so it's been about 45 minutes. I've given this a really good time to dry because I didn't want to put it through and then it not be right because I actually really love this background. Basically, I'm waiting until I can't see any kind of moisture on here anymore and I can touch this and it's, it's not going anywhere. So I always sort of find that I'll pick a corner that it's not quite right. So down here, for example, I'm not particularly happy with the way that the, um, texture paste has reacted with the ink and that's just something that happens sometimes um, so I sort of use this as my testing corner would touch and then to, once it felt like it was okay that's when I've gone yep cool we're good to keep going so I'm going to use mink foil for this I highly recommend using the mink foil with the mink texture paste in a mink machine um, you just get better results that way you can use couture creations uh, foil I so far have found it doesn't react as nicely it tends to uh, stick a little bit more to the paper so here are two others that I've tried beforehand and as you can see they just sort of attach to the paper behind the foil the um, texture paste a little bit more it, it depends like it's a great it's a great effect but it's not what I'm looking for so it, it's kind of not the right thing uh, but you can use it. I haven't tried the the deco foil yet, but I have used the the mink foil, and I found it's it's working very very nicely. So this is the silver foil, and I'm just cutting this down to be the right size. I tend to find just a little bit bigger than the piece I'm working with is nicer. But if you want to be really careful with how with your foil, that's fine too. So once I've got my foil all cut out. I'm just going to put this into the little uh, protective pocket. Yes, this is the right size. Um, you can, there are the, the big sort of 12 by 12 ones. I don't like to use them unless I have to. So put that in the little pocket. Now I've got my mink set on four. So as soon as that beeps, which should be very, very soon, I'm going to put this through and we'll come back and we'll do the reveal together. Okay, so that's gone through. This is the best part. I so love doing this. As long as it works. If it doesn't work, I'm not such a big fan. I'm deliberately trying to keep this a bit of a secret from you guys. Now, that texture paste wasn't 100% dry on the top, so it has stuck to my sheet. It generally comes up pretty easily, so it's not a big deal. Please work. All right, here we go. Okay, it hasn't worked completely. It hasn't stuck just on some of these bits, but honestly, I love that effect anyway. I think that's actually really cool the way it's kind of half done it. And I think, I think with foiling, this is what I'm slowly starting to realize. The, the more you embrace the fact that it's not always gonna be perfect, if you can get away with not having a perfect one, as, if, as in that's not going to ruin whatever you're making, I think it's really cool. This has actually worked out really nicely. I kind of like the little spots where it hasn't gone through. It kind of lets that really pretty color go color pop through. I'll get my words out in a minute. So what I thought I'd do is turn this into a really quick and simple kind of card. So all I'm going to do is just put this in the, the paper trimmer and just trim off the white edge 
on the left. Hmm? Right. right, sorry, right. I'm not good with lefts and rights. And then just square it up because it's not quite square. It was a bit of scrap card, so it won't quite be the right squareness. And then what I'm going to do is cut this down. I don't want it to be a normal size card because this is my sort of basic card base. I want it to be, I reckon I'm going to make a 10 by 10 card. So I'm going to really quickly cut my card base down first. I'm going to cut that to 10, 11. And that way it's going to have a bit of a white border all around it. No, it's not going to be 11 by 11, it's going to be a little bit shorter than that. So I'll make this one 10 by 10. And like I said, I don't particularly like this corner, so I'm kind of avoiding it. So I'll just cut that to 10 by 10. I love that background so much. So now all I'm going to do is mount this on my card base. I'm actually going to cut this a little bit skinnier because it's just not quite going to be right. So I'm just going to move that over and just mark it with a pencil. And I'm just going to mount this on using glue tape. It doesn't um, spin so well because that's now got some grip to it. So you just if it doesn't spin on your page, that's why. So just mount that on there. I love that so much. And then all I'm going to do, and I'm going to do it really, really fast, so I'm going to speed through. I'm just going to put in a sentiment that I'm going to black heat emboss or white heat emboss on black paper. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, and I'll be right back. Happy, 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 which is one of my favourite stamp sets from Lawn Fawn. It's just so good. And I'm just going to put the happy, so I've just hit white heat embossed these, so I've got sending happy thoughts. And I figured that could be used at the moment for basically anything. Um, now I could, I could put it up on um, foam tape, but honestly I think it's going to be fine just as it is. So I'm just grabbing for the uh, just for the plain sentiments. I'm just going to use uh, double-sided tape. I don't want to grab my don't want to put glue dots all over the back of this. So I'm just going to put normal um, double-sided tape on here. And for that happy, I'm just trying to work out how I'm going to stick that on. So I've got the happy thoughts. I might just do that with liquid glue, it might be easier. So I'll just grab the glue tube. With intricate ones like this, I just like to do dots. I don't want too much popping out the sides if I can avoid it. try to keep this as straight as I can but you could do it kind of wonky or something but there we go that's a, a reasonably simple card just using some unsimple techniques I really love that foil I, I actually really love the fact that it didn't come out perfect and that could have been I might not have got quite enough um, of the texture paste on there I might have gone a little bit thin might not have rubbed down hard enough there's a lot of different things but I actually really like the effect and like I said I've, I've 
practice with a couple of other things. I'll show you another one which is probably my favourite. Sorry, another couple. I forgot that I'd done a few. Uh, so I've got this one with some stars and that one I definitely went early with the, um, the foil on there. I've got this one with some spots. Again, very, very simple but God, I love it. I just love the effect of it. Which These are obviously memory decks cards I haven't finished yet. And then this one I was just trying with some different coloured foil to see what I got. They're supposed to be fireworks. Um, and I, I kind of like the effect of the different colours on them. But so far, I think I think this one may take the mantle as the favourite. I really, really love it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this one. It wasn't too technique heavy. Please let me know if it was or if you'd like to see me use this in another project. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up if you did enjoy it and be subscribed to my channel for any future videos that I might do using it. I'm still trying really hard to get my hands on the Mink Toner Ink. I think that's what it's called. Um, I do know it's coming very, very soon. So as soon as they've got it, I'm getting it. And I'll bring you a video on that as soon as I can. I hope you guys have an absolutely fantastic rest of your day, whatever you're doing. And I'll see you again in my next video. Sending lots of huggles. Bye.